And then up next, we have uh, the augmented uh, conversation from uh, David A. Smith, uh, Chief Innovation Officer over at uh, Lockheed Martin. So uh, whenever you're ready. Thanks. This will be a little bit different, um, kind of, uh, we're certainly government related, um, but I'm going to talk more about the technical uh, opportunities and aspects. Uh, my mentor, can you hear this? Check, test, test. Uh, said this actually in a uh, uh, early paper, man is much more than a tool builder, he's an inventor of universes. Okay. I got to stop there. That's fine. Good. This will just take a second. All set? So, this is an F-35. We make them. It's probably the most sophisticated thing on the planet today. Uh, very complex, very impressive piece of machinery. What's really interesting is this is an AR helmet. It makes the cockpit invisible. Basically, the pilot can see through it just like Wonder Woman could see through her airplane. He controls that airplane with this information, is basically able to see whatever's going on around him and very easily. Uh, it completely changes the paradigm of what we do as a warfighter. Uh, very interesting and very important, and by the way, probably the most sophisticated AR application right now. I'm going to give you a quick overview of history. This is uh, repeating some of the things that Steve Feiner mentioned earlier uh, today. Uh, Ivan Sutherland, who you've heard about, came up with this concept, I think, of as the, uh, uh, the computer as a uh, participant in, in a conversation. Uh, basically, with Sketchpad, he was able to establish a relationship with the computer where he'd specify kind of parameters and the computer would resolve that. This is the first real uh, computer graphics application and a very important one. And as you see in the bottom corner, he also made probably the most, uh, probably the first working head mount display that actually used a computer image in 1968. Uh, if you look closely at that one on the left, you'll notice you can see his eyes. It's an AR display. By the way, my, one of my first bosses built this machine for Ivan. Uh, going further, a little bit further ahead, we see Doug Engelbart, who had the concept of the augmented group, the augmented uh, computer system, where, the, where people were actually, uh, and particular groups, were able to be extended and were able to work together. Uh, he's known as the guy who invented the mouse, but it's probably the least important of the things that he, he, uh, he did. Uh, one of the things he had this idea, the state of technology has a direct impact on our ability to manipulate information, which then in turn has a direct impact on our state of technology. This is a virtuous cycle. What that means is our inventing personal computers allows us to invent better devices, and we're on the, I think, at the threshold of being able to invent something in the wearable domain that's going to allow us to really transcend this. Uh, Alan Kay, uh, who I've worked with for many, many years, uh, you're probably familiar with uh, the interface that he built at uh, Xerox Park. You've been using it for the last 30 years. Uh, if we sat you down in front of that machine in 75 or 78, you'd already know how to use it because you've been using it. Uh, but he came up with this concept that he called the Dynabook, which we think of as uh, the thing that really influenced what we see as laptops, but more importantly, maybe the iPad. That drawing was actually one that he did to illustrate the idea, and one of the things you should notice is that those two kids actually have the same uh, image on their computer. They're actually collaborating, working together uh, to, to uh, program Space Wars as it is. Uh, so this idea of a collaborative platform is what all these guys were after from the very beginning. And we kind of lost that when Bill Gates and Steve Jobs took those ideas and delivered them to us. And we still haven't really brought them back. Um, so that's where I, th I sort of feel the opportunity for us uh, with the augmented uh, reality platforms uh, gives us the opportunity to get back on the path that they established. Uh, this augmented conversation basically allows you and I to have a conversation with the computer as a full participant, allowing us to explore ideas mutually. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things that we're doing to enable this. Uh, this is a head mount display system that we built. Uh, it's a 150-degree <coughs> field of view. Um, it's actually, there, here's another one, which is this one right here, which is also 150, uh, very, very wide. Uh, you've probably seen maybe an Oculus, which is uh, very much smaller than this. 
Interestingly enough, we have an even wider one. This is 180. Uh, this completely changes the paradigm for what you expect in an immersive space. We're going to be using this for next generation flight simulation, getting rid of the, getting rid of the domes. Uh, See-through is another area that's pretty exciting. Uh, and what's obviously what we're doing here at the AR conference, or AWE conference. Uh, and that's um, one of the things we are after is very, very lightweight and very wide field of view simultaneously. This display uh, is uh, 30 by 40, but we actually have one that's 140. I'll show you that. But this is 100 grams. And here's the 140 degree field of view optical lens. And on the software side, uh, one of the projects we've been working on is the virtual framework, which is actually an open source project uh, that uh, you can actually go down to virtualworldframework.com and start playing with it. Uh, this is um, a replicated computation environment. Uh, the first version I did, uh, I did this with Alan Kay, but what you see here is two different browsers, and each of the users, uh, you know, it could be thousands of miles apart, uh, can see the other person. So I'm going to just play this as a movie. Hopefully it'll just play. And what you'll see is the guy on the, le uh, on the, the left actually building content, and then the, other, the guy on the right is actually able to see that. But this kind of illustrates the concept I was talking about earlier about the augmented conversation. Multiple people able to interact with this information simultaneously. This in particular is a web-based uh, environment. Uh, which I believe, by the way, is what's going to happen. Augmented reality is uh, just, I think, just an extension of the web, or maybe the way to think about it is turning the web inside out. So what he's going to do, I assume it's still playing. Uh, I can't see. OK. So he's going to start modifying that. And notice, these guys can be, like I said, thousands of miles away. This is a bit identical computation that's occurring on both sides. So any simulation that's running locally is also running remotely. And uh, basically, we don't have, to, we don't have a client-server model in the traditional sense. Uh, all the clients maintain their own state. And uh, we, we're doing a replication of events and, and computation. So we actually have an identical state at the end of all this with very, very little uh, a need to, uh, to do any synchronization. So you can do even something pretty interesting like that. Of course, one of the things we did was we moved that over so we could support uh, head mount display systems. So basically what you see here is uh, the uh, uh, virtual world framework for an immersive environment, but we should be able also to do that for uh, optical see-through, and that's one of the next goals. But we're really, we, we really see the web as the platform. When you think about all these different systems that are out there, uh, I think uh, we're seeing Today, a revolution occurring in the capabilities of, uh, of, of, of web browsers. When you look at WebGL, WebSockets, WebRTC, these are incredible systems. And they are getting faster, more capable every, all, all the time. So that, and that one nice thing is it's all free. It's all there for you to take and, and use immediately. Um, <clears throat> so augmented conversations, a discussion within groups, like what I'm talking about here, I could mention uh, sort of a, an engineering uh, uh, design, and we could actually create that in front of us. Uh, you could reach in there and modify that dynamically. We could actually run it as an engine or something, run that as a simulation, explore what its uh, capabilities are, find out what its failure points are. Basically, what happens is this conversation is as easy to have and easy to uh, explore as it is to talk about the weather. So where are we going? We think we can make this. In fact, we're pretty sure we can make this. This is a uh, 140 to 180 degree field of view optical see-through. Uh, obviously, it has all the other characteristics I was talking about, but it's going to be uh, a pretty nice device. And I just, there's no real showstoppers at this point for everybody to have these kinds of things. Uh, so I might be looking out a little bit far, but you know, not more than five years, probably less. Uh, thanks. Any questions? It would be you. <laughs> I have a question about the F-35. My yeah. understanding is there's a lot of latency and some jutter and, or jitter. Could you comment on the challenges of that? No. 
uh, partially because I don't know, and if I did, I couldn't anyway. Um, so I, that was a uh, that was a picture I got from the internet. So it's like I, I can't even give you official pictures. Best answer to a question I've heard all day. Okay, uh, yeah. next question. Uh, so you uh, have been developing some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, are those uh, glasses? Do they occlude what's behind them as well? Like option? Not is yet. That the idea? No, these don't. These are uh, standard ghost image that you see. Uh, we have some ideas of how to fix that, uh, but that's pretty preliminary at this point. Mm -hmm. um, our, our main focus was getting uh, wide, wide enough field of view and having a, a nice, sharp display. Uh, and we, and we've kinda, we're pretty sure we succeeded at that. And a quick follow-up. like The uh, Oculus Rift seemed to be very uh, a jump forward you know, for the consumer based mm -hmm. on uh, like cell phone hardware making it uh, cheap to you know, manufacture that. Yeah. Um, so you must be privy to some interesting sensors and things that you imagine will be coming down the pipe. Uh, I can point to like LiDAR technology with all the auto, uh, you know, self-driving cars yeah. bringing cheap sensors to the world. Like, do you have any others that you would suggest will be interesting in the near future? There's some really nice IR stuff that we've, we've seen. LiDAR in particular, uh, very micro-sized LiDAR is something we see on the horizon. Uh, I, I think that that actually sit, helps with a lot of things. Uh, the current optical connect-like devices uh, have some really, you can't use them in sunlight, for example. Uh, so we, we expect that we'll see uh, some uh, breakthroughs there, not necessarily from Lockheed. Lockheed doesn't do consumer devices. You know, we only do one thing in quantities over 1,000, so I don't expect you'll see that from us. But uh, you'll see, um, those, those kinds of technologies will start uh, reaching the, the consumer. You know, it's more demand-oriented than anything. The only way that these things actually show up is if people actually need them in quantities over 1,000. You know, millions of units, you'll have one that works okay. Next year, you'll have one that works really good. Uh, but that's the, that's the problem we face right now. Somebody was mentioning that earlier today in an er earlier discussion, is that we're really talking about tens of thousands of units this is an uninteresting market, and the only way it really is going to emerge is if we can get to millions of units uh, that are good. Uh, and good, good enough is uh, surprisingly high when you're talking about the consumer space. We're all developers, so we're willing to give in, give up a lot. We don't, you know, because we'll, it's cool for us. We like to play with it. But when you hand it over to your mother or, or you know, your friends who aren't in this space, uh, you know, they'll have fun for five minutes and then they'll start complaining about it. It's not going to work. That's not space. So you need to be way higher than what we are. Uh, so I think that's the biggest challenge. And, all, you know, we've got some really nice technologies uh, on the show floor downstairs and around here. But uh, it's not even ready, frankly, for some of the stuff that we need to do in, in the government sector. Uh, it's not robust enough. It's, it's uh, nowhere in a quality. And certainly the things we put it through will probably break it in about five minutes. Great. So, uh, any more questions? Okay. Well, Thanks uh, a lot. thank you, David. And awesome that you view the web as the platform. <laughs>